My days looked all the same. I would wake up, have breakfast, turn on my laptop and start coding and finish coding in the evening. Nothing changed since that time. Hello, I'm Stacy. I'm a self-taught software engineer working full-time. Today I want to talk about my learning journey. I began from not knowing what is a terminal to writing code and making money out of it. Get some coffee or tea and let's get started! When I first thought about switching careers in tech, I told about it just a few people. I was afraid of failing and didn't want to explain my thoughts to everyone. You know how it is, if you fail, some people might judge you, uh, judge your abilities. I kind of wanted to avoid it, and it was already a hard decision for me. I wanted to be surrounded by supportive community and loved ones, and not negative things. During that time, I created my Instagram account. I wanted to find more like-minded friends. I decided that every day I'll document what I learned. It helped me so much to stay on track. Friends I found there were highly supportive. I also saw people with similar experiences who wanted to switch careers to tech. If you ask me now, I would not recommend you to keep your career switch a secret. If you'd like to know why I've changed my opinion, stay with me till the end of the video. In the beginning, I did a lot of research on what kind of technical stack to choose. First, I thought that game development would be pretty cool. So I asked my friends and looked online where I should start. From what I figured out, C Sharp seemed like a good choice. It was the beginning of my journey and I experimented without any clear goal. So I found the free C Sharp course. I did some lessons and I couldn't understand anything. I had many self-doubts and I thought it wasn't good to continue learning and probably coding is not for me. And that's funny now, but that's what I thought. You might experience those moments as well. That's why having support is so needed. I also read a lot of articles about game development. I was interested in what kind of jobs it has. I wrote down what I would need to learn to find a decent job. I did it for all of other jobs too and professions. Searching on Google was helpful and uh, I could also find lifestyle videos or blog posts and um, learn more about the work-life balance. I don't remember why and where exactly I read it, but I got the impression that game development jobs are not beginners friendly. I never figured out uh, if it was true, so if you're in game development, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Leave a comment under this video, please. So with daily practice, I learned the basics such as variables, loops, and so on with that free course. I knew it all in C-sharp and I haven't used that language since then. It happens, yeah. In the beginning, all the concepts seemed strange, but once I learned the basics, I realized that they were the same across all the languages. So don't be worried if you would switch a language in your job. It's okay. While watching videos from game devs, I realized that the type of job is not exactly what I'm looking for, so I started to explore other opportunities. Another two fields of my interest were data science and web development. Previously, I had experience in web design and thought it would be nice to continue and combine my knowledge with web development. And no, it wasn't what I thought by that time. I decided to give more time to data science and see if I like it. I found a website that allowed me to get basic information and knowledge about these jobs without paying anything. If I find the website, I'll leave the link in description. Quickly, by experimenting with both, I was able to pick web development. That's how the real journey started. Not being able to decide what field to choose is okay. How can you know if you like it before you even try it, right? When I figured out what I'd like to study, things became more complicated. It started to feel like a life-changing decision. I was thinking about what courses should I take? What course is better? Would it be enough to find a job? Should I take certificates? What kind of technical stack to choose? Like, there were a lot of questions. And to be honest, I couldn't find the answers at all, like at once. And I was overthinking. The strategy I used was to work backwards. I started exploring job opportunities near me, like what was available. I also analyzed what technologies companies use 
I created a list with all of the requirements and started to look for educational resources. This is probably the approach I would still use if I had to start over. I have a video on my channel with free online resources I used to get my first dev job, so that you can check it out. I started practicing every day. I planned my learning, separating days by topics. So for example, I figured out that to start I'd need to learn HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I found an intro course on HTML and CSS and a separate one for JavaScript. On the HTML and CSS, I was learning how to create layouts, the specifics, and so on. I would dedicate the morning to this. Then I would do a JavaScript course in the evening and practice or follow along. The order varied, but I was ensuring that I had consistency in my studying. I would not jump to learning something new until I felt I could use my existing knowledge. I felt like even little breaks would harm the learning speed, so I was taking only one day of holidays during that period of time. My days looked all the same. I would wake up, have breakfast, turn on my laptop and start coding and finish coding in the evening. Nothing changed in that time. After four months of coding and learning, I created a good looking portfolio website. It had just two projects, but I think they were nice. Some good layouts, pictures and carousels. I showed it to some friends telling them about my new passion. One of them was looking for a person to design and build a website. She wanted a landing page with some logic. Like that, by talking to friends, I picked up my first freelance project. I'm glad you watched until this point. I guess you have already realized that talking about your new passion could help you in many ways. It's a great way to find your first client and develop new skills. Also, you never know what you could learn from other people's stories, right? So, thanks to networking, I found my first client and my first freelance job. I'm going to make a separate video about that. If you'd like to see it first, hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and see you soon!